Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we're going to be installing our own domain name server on our Raspberry Pi, so stay tuned. So for those of you who don't know what a domain name server is, or DNS for short, it's basically an internet's equivalent version of a phone book. Much like your cell phone where if you punch in the name and if you have the contact saved, it will automatically just call that number. The DNS server does exactly the same thing. As you type in google.com, it will actually reach the domain name server, look in its directory or its database, and look for the IP and connect to that website. Now we know what a DNS server is. Now a couple of reasons why we want to run it in our house is one, it allows us to control what content is being displayed in our household and what ads and stuff like that you want to blacklist. And two, essentially we're going to be speeding up our internet because we are actually content filtering and not downloading all the stuff that we don't want to see, like ads or stuff like that. Also, since we're running this locally in our server, we don't have to reach outside for the same directory, which will decrease the latency. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get to the software portion. All right, to start off, we're gonna be using a default installation of Raspbian and Jesse. And if you guys haven't seen my other video on how to install it, I'm gonna leave a link in the description and a card up on above. All right, going forward, first, we what we wanna do is actually make sure that our IP is gonna be static. So what that means is, instead of every time I plug it into Raspberry Pi, it's gonna change its IP address, that's something you do not want. So let's sudo nano etc networking interfaces. And in here, you're going to see that iFace etho0 is on manual. Let's change this to static. Then we're going to add address. For me, it's actually 192.168.1.65. Now we're going to do a net mask of 255.255.255.0. And my gateway, which is 192.168.1.1. Exit that. And the next time it reboots, it's just going to keep that IP address. So we don't really have to reboot right now because my IP address is already 192.168.1.65. Now you're gonna to want to navigate to a website called pi-hole.net. Okay, basically what you can do is just copy, paste it right into your bash. Enter, and it's gonna do its thing. It's actually gonna curl and then install it into bash. Pi-hole is free, but it's powered by donations. Pi-hole is a server, it needs to be a static IP address, which we just did. Etho0 is available, that's what I have it plugged into. IPv4, and that's the address that we're gonna be using, yes. Is it possible that your router is still trying to assign the IP, blah, 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 if you're right, it's okay. Which DNS server provider do you wanna use? I usually use Google, you could've used OpenDNS. Okay, now it's gonna run through installing all the files and packages for your Raspberry Pi. All right, now that the installation is complete, we should just be able to set up our DNS server and point to our Raspberry Pi and it should just start working. To do that, what you wanna do is go into your network settings, adapter, find the device that you're using, which for me is my ethernet adapter. Then in here, you go into your IPv4 properties and you see how it says use the following DNS server and I have it pointed to Google. Now you just have to point it to 192.168.165. And that will be pointed directly to our Raspberry Pi. To check it, all you have to do is just go to Google or any website. And if it comes back, you know it's working. Now to verify if the ads are working, because you're gonna see that they actually download a list of malwares to block, websites, ads, stuff like that. We're gonna to have to find a place with ads. Now if you see, as soon as I hopped into AOL, all these ad choices, they're white. Now if I was out of this, go back to adapter setting, and pop right out of our DNS server, and change it back to Google. If I was to go 
refresh the site, you see all these ads pop up. Now this is especially useful if you have kids who are playing games on their iPads that have all these little tiny ads that pop up. By default, after installing everything, the ads will be blocked automatically. It actually pulls all the sources from various places and loads up your blacklist to block all the ads. Now, if you wanna control what content is going through your household, you wanna actually get into the Pi and it comes with a lot of preloaded scripts. So you can just type blacklist.sh and type in the website. For me, I'm gonna give uh, Nova Spear a try, which is my website, blacklist that. It's gonna add it to the blacklist file. Then you will wanna type gravity.sh. This is the program that he uses to reload all the blacklist and all the whitelist and all that stuff back into the um, domain name server. Once that's done, you're gonna see, I'm gonna to try to hit novaspirit.com. The site's not gonna load, it's just gonna be a white page. So that's how you know it works. If I was to actually get out of the network, you're gonna see my page load. Now another cool thing about a pie hole, you can actually go into this admin page. Uh, you point it to the IP address of your DNS server or your Raspberry Pi type in slash admin and it'll bring you to this website that tells you how many ads been blocked, uh, how many domains are in the list and a total of uh, you know the statistics of what's going on and this is actually a pretty cool little thing to look at so I know how, how efficient this um, pie hole is or the DNS server that we're building. Now to get rid of that list you could actually just whitelist that sh Type in the website again. Now gravity to reload the new specs. Once that's done, you should be able to reach my website again. And there you have it, my website again. Thanks for watching my video guys. Now I'm gonna start introducing more internet security related videos on my channel itself. This way it could introduce you guys on what you could do for preventative maintenance on malware and more so content blocking and see what your kids are doing. Now if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you have any questions, hit up in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, hit that little subscribe button. Now as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe, it helps me a lot. And if you want to watch more videos like this, I'll post a link right here.